April has been an eventful month for Jack Ma and Elon Musk. After months of hiding from the public, Jack finally got his verdict from Xi Jinping, and Tesla's honeymoon in China is over. Elon Musk is playing defense as his uphill battle turns ugly. But Jack's rise and fall might be indicative of Elon's future roadmap in China. Hello everyone, welcome to Lay's Real Talk, I'm Lei. Jack Ma once enjoyed rock star status. He and his company Alibaba were the national pride of China. He was idolized as the master of success and was lovingly called Daddy Ma by young people. Jack Ma couldn't be who he is without the help of the Chinese communist leaders. But today, Jack is Daddy Ma no more. He's now called an evil capitalist, a vampire on Chinese social media. In a country where the internet is censored and public opinions manipulated, he's now ridiculed as Grandson Ma or Kitty Ma. Even on his company's intranet, his employees openly call him Alibaba's biggest destabilizing factor. More importantly, his businesses have suffered. More than a week ago, his Alibaba group was fined $2.8 billion for antitrust violations. A few days later, the Chinese regime imposed a sweeping restructuring on his end group. Directed by China's central bank, the restructuring will cut into end group's valuation and profitability. Around the same time, a business school he founded, Hupai University, was forced to suspend its classes and student enrollment. And it doesn't stop here. The regime has now started investigating companies that Jack invested in. In an April 15th article titled The Vanishing Billionaire, the Financial Times analyzed Jack Ma's rise and fall. It attributed his downfall to a rift between him and Xi Jinping because of Jack's ego and outspokenness. But I think the Financial Times missed something important. The rise and fall of Jack Ma has nothing to do with Jack Ma. It in fact has to do with the system in which he rises and falls. Even if Jack had no ego and wasn't outspoken, he would be in the same situation as today. Nobody knows this better than Jack himself. Back in 2013, in a talk with a group of entrepreneurs, he was quoted as saying, Almost no Chinese entrepreneurs come to a good ending. When Esquire magazine asked him about this quote in an interview in 2013, he said, I think Chinese entrepreneurs certainly come to no good end. I already know how I will end. Jack knows well that his success isn't allowed to exist outside the control of the Chinese Communist Party. The fact that his business empire has become so powerful has already decided its ending. In the eyes of the Chinese regime, no business success is earned by the entrepreneurial him or herself. It is bestowed upon them by the regime. They can bring it to you and they can also take it away from you. This is one thing that many multinational companies and Western business people fail to recognize. They think that as long as they create a win-win situation, they can share a piece of the pie with the Chinese regime. Well, they're in for a big shock, including Elon Musk. On April 19th, the first day of the Shanghai International Auto Show, a woman wearing a t-shirt with the words, Break Failure, stood on the roof of a Tesla Model 3, shouting Break Failure repeatedly. When she was taken to the Tesla employee rest area, her companions shouted, Tesla, get out. I wonder how she suddenly appeared on the top of a car. Look how long she was able to stay there to perform. In a country where security and police take down a protester in a matter of seconds, it's hard to believe they didn't know what to do with that woman. On the afternoon of the incident, Tao Lin, vice president of Tesla China, responded that Tesla had in fact addressed this consumer's complaint. Still, the woman refused to cooperate and only wanted high compensation. Tao said, we can't agree to her request because the request is unreasonable. I think she is very professional with people backing her. I don't know who that is. 
However, this incident was immediately used by Chinese media outlets to launch an attack on Tesla. Chief editor of China's state-run Global Times, Hu Xijin, said that Tesla has to pay a reputation price for failing to handle disputes with users. Chang'an Sword, which is a media affiliate of the CCP's Political and Legal Affairs Commission, stated that Tesla cannot provide safe and reliable products to car owners and cannot provide practical solutions when problems occur. And CCP mouthpiece Xinhua News Agency said on April 20th, Tesla executives responded arrogantly. Who gave Tesla the confidence to be uncompromising? Last month, the Chinese regime banned Tesla cars for entering military housing complexes, citing security concerns over the cameras installed on the vehicles. Here's an actual notice posted in a military community. Elon Musk went on China's central TV later to defend Tesla cars and lavishly praised China. From climate control to economic development, he also said that the Chinese economy would soon be the biggest in the world. I doubt his praises on Chinese national TV will change where the relationship is heading because just like Jack Ma's, his faith in China is on a trajectory that cannot be reversed. In a previous video, I discussed the three-step ploy the CCP uses against foreign investors, attract, trap, and slaughter. The slaughter phase usually begins with media attacks. With that woman ranting on top of a Tesla car, Elon Musk has unfortunately entered the slaughter stage, and the ending is very predictable, just like Jack Ma predicted his own. Being successful in China usually comes with a price. Back in 2006, at the time Jack was contemplating launching Alipay, he said that he was willing to go to jail for his business if he had to. That explains why, after getting the record 2.8 billion fine, Alibaba thanked the central government for guidance. After all, Jack is just happy that he isn't in jail. Jack Ma and Elon Musk had a live debate in Shanghai in 2019. It was reported that Elon wasn't impressed by China's then richest man. But there is a lesson or two Elon can learn from Jack in dealing with the CCP. Actually, we can all learn a lesson or two from their stories. Here are my two previous videos that explain Tesla's journey in China. Please subscribe and like my videos, and I thank you.